Uh, I'm Dr. Isa Muhammad, a consultant. Like that. Consultant Radiation Oncology at King Hussein Cancer Center in Amman, Jordan. I will be discussing radiotherapy for early stage laryngeal cancer. Uh, in the next uh, 25 minutes, I uh, will discuss uh, key anatomical features important for understanding laryngeal cancer and its uh, treatment, explain the diagnostic process for early stage disease, uh, discuss the staging criteria and its significance, and treatment planning, outline the various treatment options for early stage laryngeal cancer, uh, emphasize uh, the role of radiotherapy in the treatment plan, uh, discuss the radiation doses and the fractionation schedules used in a treating early stage laryngeal cancer and explain the rationale behind the chosen doses and schedules. Then uh, I will describe the different radiotherapy techniques available and define the target volumes for radiation therapy, then I will conclude. Uh, I will start with the normal anatomy of the larynx. The larynx is a small anatomical structure. It's divided into three uh, anatomic uh, regions, the supraglottis, glottis, and subglottis. Supraglottis uh, is divided into epiglottis, area epiglottic fold, the area of arytenoid, supraglottis, and the area of ventricle. Then the glottis is divided into right through vocal cord, left through vocal cord, anterior and posterior commissure. Then uh, the subglottis extending from the lower uh, boundary of the glottis uh, to the lower margin of the cricoid uh, cartilage. Uh, staging workup and the pretreatment evaluation of early stage laryngeal cancer should include complete history and physical examination, including fiber optic uh, laryngoscopy. You need to uh, document the location of the tumor, extension, the mobility of the vocal cord. Also, it's very helpful to record uh, the fiber optic video. You can have a look during uh, GTV contouring uh, during radiotherapy planning. Then once the mass is identified, you need to send your patients for DL and biopsy to confirm the presence of SCC. Once uh, SCC is confirmed, you need to order next CT scan with IV contrast to rule out endophytic extension of the tumor, uh, to rule out paraglottic, brevoglottic, and uh, thyroid cartilage uh, extension. Uh, CT chest, it's not necessary for actually T1, T2 glottic cancer, but once we are speaking about supraglottis and the glottis, and given uh, the significant smoking history of our patients in our region, so uh, I, in my practice, I do order CT chest to rule out second primary uh, lung cancer in these patients. Then, uh, pretreatment evaluation also uh, for smokers should include the smoking cessation uh, counseling and also pre radiotherapy dental evaluation. Also, it's very important to engage your nutritionist, speech, and the swallow team during and after radiation uh, therapy. So once uh, the workup is completed, you need to document uh, the final stage based on the TNM staging system at edition. So staging for T1, T2 glottic larynx cancer, uh, T1A, the tumor is involving one vocal cord with, uh, with intact mobility. T1B, tumor involving both vocal cords with intact mobility. T2, tumor is involving one cord and extending to supraglottis or subglottis or any tumor with impaired uh, mobility. Staging of supraglottic larynx, T1, tumor involving one subsite with intact mobility, for example, false cord with intact mobility. T2, tumor uh, involving two subsites of the supraglottic larynx, for example, false cord with epiglottis with intact vocal cord mobility. Or uh, tumor involving uh, regions outside the larynx, for example, vellicula or medial wall of bariform sinus. Regarding the staging of the subglottic larynx, T1, tumor limited to subglottis. T2, tumor extends to vocal cords with normal or impaired uh, mobility. Uh, let's move to treatment options for T1, T2 glottic cancer. Treatment options include either transoral laser surgery or radiation therapy. And with the radiation therapy, we have too many options. I will uh, discuss later in my presentation in the technical part. Uh, in the literature, we have only small uh, randomized uh, trial comparing laser surgery with radiation therapy. They evaluated voice quality after uh, treatment with radiation versus uh, laser. They included patients with T1 and 0 uh, glottic SCC. Radiation uh, was 66 degree, 66 degree and 33 fractions. 
uh, over 6.5 weeks using the hanger schedule versus uh, transoral laser surgery. Uh, voice equality was evaluated at the baseline and uh, six months and 24 months post uh, treatment. Uh, and the main outcome was uh, physician reported uh, and uh, patient reported voice equality. Uh, regarding the physician reported uh, voice equality, they reported the quality of the voice in terms of grade, roughness, breathiness, asthenia, and uh, strain. While patients reported voice equality focused on hoarseness and impact uh, on every uh, day life. The results of this study showed that uh, both treatment options, radiation and laser, showed similar uh, to your local, local control. However, uh, transoral uh, surgery reported more breathy voice and wider glottal gap, while uh, patients who received radiation therapy reported less hoarseness and uh, related to uh, inconvenience in daily living at two years. Several meta-analyses compared uh, radiation versus transoral laser surgery and showed that both options reported to have equivalent oncological outcomes in terms of local uh, control. Uh, however, most appears to favor radiation in terms of voice equality for larger tumors or tumors involving uh, anterior commissure. For T1A, we prefer transoral laser surgery over radiation therapy for tumors not extending to anterior commissure, as anterior commissure is difficult to clear oncologically, and anterior glottic web may occur, uh, which uh, subsequently will impact the voice equality in this highly curable uh, disease. Uh, this is a prospective observation cohort study from UK evaluated patient choice in the treatment of early stage laryngeal cancer, comparing treatment choice uh, of radiation versus transoral laser surgery. This study included patients with T1T2 glottic STC. In this study, patients were uh, seen in the joint clinic together with head and neck surgeon and radiation uh, oncologist. 51 uh, patients uh, were uh, directed uh, towards radiation by the medical team. They were only uh, eligible for radiation therapy alone, while 47 patients were eligible for both surgery and radiation therapy, and these patients were given a choice between radiation versus transoral laser uh, surgery. Interestingly, 60% of patients choose trans oral laser surgery and this difference was statistically significant. So it's very important when you have a patient eligible for laser and radiation to be seen jointly with head and neck surgeon uh, to address the advantages and disadvantages between radiation and laser and based on patient's factors, the tumor factors and uh, availability of expertise, then you select the appropriate treatment for your uh, early stage laryngeal cancer. Uh, radiotherapy outcomes for early glottic uh, cancer, uh, the five-year local control rates for T1 disease, it's uh, ranging between 85 to 95%, while for T2 disease, 60 to 80%. Actually, T2 is a heterogeneous group, and that's why you see the, this wide uh, range between local control ranging between 60 to 80%. And the five-year overall survival rates is, is more than 90%. Uh, when you treat these patients with radiation therapy, we don't electively irradiate the neck given the low incidence of nodal spread. So let's move to the radiation dose and the fractionation uh, schedule for T1 glottic cancer. So data from uh, Osaka, Japan, published by Yamazaki et al. evaluated the effect of radiotherapy fraction size and overall treatment time on the local control of early stage glottic cancer. Patients with T1 uh, glottic STC were randomized to 2 gray bear fraction versus 2.25 gray bear fraction. Patients with a minimal tumor that involving less than two thirds of the true vocal cord were randomized to 6 gray and 30 fractions versus 56 gray, 0.25 gray, and 25 fractions, while tumors that involving two-thirds or more of the true vocal cords were randomized to 66 gray and 33 fractions versus 63 and 28 fractions. And uh, there was a clear win. Arm B, the 2.25 gray berry fraction, had 15% improvement in local control compared to arm A conventional fractionation. And there was no statistically significant difference between two groups in terms of acute uh, toxicity. Another study from Korean Radiation Oncology Group 0201 had the similar. Uh, 
clinical trial designed to Yamazaki but included patients with uh, T1, T2 aglotic cancer. These patients were randomized to 2 gray bear refraction versus 2.25 gray bear refraction. T1 patients received 66 gray and 33 fractions versus 63 and 28 fractions, while patients with T2 disease received 70 gray and 35 fractions versus 67.5 and 30 fractions. Initially, they aimed to recruit 282 patients. However, this study closed prematurely, uh, and uh, they were able to recruit only 156 patients. But they did subgroup analysis for T1A disease, and they reported the five-year local progression-free survival for uh, this uh, group of patients. And they found that patients who received 2.25 gray barrier fractions, uh, they had uh, a trend towards improvement in local control compared to 2 gray barrier fraction, but this was not statistically significant. The B value was uh, 0.056. So from uh, Korean Radiation Oncology Group and Yamazaki trial, we can conclude that for T1 uh, disease, 63 and 28 fraction is one of the standard of care radiation doses for uh, early stage glottic cancer. Uh, another important uh, trial is the Hanka 6. This is a phase 3 randomized clinical trial of glottic larynx. Included uh, non, um, patients with non metastatic stage 1 to 4 laryngeal cancer. However, the most of the patients had T1, T2 disease were randomized to 6 versus 5 fractions per week to the same total radiation dose. Uh, and uh, the patients who benefited from uh, treatment in intensification the most were patients with early stage well differentiated tumors. The hazard ratio was uh, for this group of patients is 0 0.42. However, for non well differentiated tumors with T1, T2, the hazard ratio was uh, 0 0.6. And and if you look at the local control. For uh, patients in this uh, trial, you can uh, see that uh, patients who had six fractions per week, they had 8% uh, inferior local uh, failure than those who had five fractions uh, per week. And this benefit was not only at the five years, also at 10 and 15 years of follow-up. Uh, another trial is RTOG uh, 9512. Uh, this is a phase two randomized clinical trial of T2 glottic uh, larynx. Randomized uh, patients to a 70 gray and 35 fractions versus 79.2 and 66 fractions using 1.2 gray per fraction BID. So uh, this study showed 8% uh, uh, superior local control for uh, hyperfractionation at five years compared to standard uh, fractionation, but this benefit was not statistically uh, significant. Japanese Clinical Oncology Group 0701, this is a phase three uh, randomized uh, clinical trial of hypofractionation, 2.4 gray bear refraction versus 2 gray bear refraction. Uh, this trial included patients with T1, T2 glottic larynx SCC. T1 patients were randomized to 66 gray and 33 fractions versus 60 and 25 fractions, while T2 patients were randomized to 70 gray and 35 fractions versus 64.8 and 27 fractions. As you can see, patients who received uh, hypofractionation, the red line, they had 8% less local failures compared to patients who received conventional fractionation at seven years. And toxicity was less with hypofractionation. And this trial was uh, showed superior results for hypofractionation over conventional fractionation. The next topic is radiotherapy uh, techniques while opposed lateral beams have a long history of radiation treatment and we know that doses to the carotids between 35 to 50 gray have been associated with carotid vessels wall uh, thickening. Uh, recent uh, data suggest a small risk of cerebrovascular uh, events uh, with two lateral opposing uh, fields compared to uh, laser surgery. A study from SEER indicated uh, 1.75 times higher risk ratio uh, with radiation compared to uh, laser resection. Uh, this data was confirmed by Arthurs from Ontario and showed uh, increased risk ratio of 1.7 for two lateral opposing compared with uh, 
transoral laser uh, surgery. These findings have generated a greater interest in IMRT. A study from MD Anderson compared the traditional to lateral opposing uh, fields with a whole larynx IMRT. And this was a dosimetric study, uh, looked at the dose distribution and clearly uh, identified that whole larynx IMRT is associated with statistically significant reduction in V35, 50, and 63 compared with two lateral opposing uh, fields. Uh, clinical data from Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, looked at conventional radiation therapy versus carotid sparing uh, IMRT and they clearly showed that patients who received carotid sparing IMRT, they had similar local control at three years to patients who were treated with conventionally fractionated radiation therapy, suggesting that whole larynx IMRT is a safe radiation treatment. So let's move from whole larynx IMRT to partial larynx uh, IMRT. And we know that reducing radiation uh, volumes is associated with improved acute and late radiation side effects. Also, we know that mean dose to the larynx above 45 gray and mean dose to the lung involved vocal cord above 50 gray are predictors of grade two and above laryngeal edema and associated with worse voice outcomes. But this transition should be uh, safe and should maintain uh, similar local control. So a dosimetric study from uh, Netherlands evaluated uh, single vocal cord irradiation in T1 glottic cancer. It showed uh, adequate tumor coverage with excellent homogeneity of the BTV. And this study also demonstrated that uh, partial uh, larynx IMRT is associated with reduction of the contralateral vocal cord and arytenoid contralateral carotid and thyroid gland uh, doses, suggesting that dosimetrically there is uh, a benefit from FC lateral uh, cord irradiation, but this should be uh, also confirmed by uh, clinical outcomes. Uh, the group from Erasmus Medical Center has reported the clinical outcomes from retrospective analysis of therapy patients with T1A and zero glottic cancer uh, treated with vocal cord only radiation therapy, and they compared the results of uh, vocal cord radiation only to a similar cohort treated with complete larynx radiation uh, therapy with IMRT. They reported excellent two-year local uh, control as well as uh, lower acute uh, toxicity and improved voice outcomes at the end of radiation therapy, 6 to 12 weeks at 6, 12, and 18 months post-radiation therapy, as you can see at the voice handicap index chart here. Uh, vocal trial is a prospective uh, phase two randomized clinical uh, trial comparing vocal cord only versus complete laryngeal uh, radiation. The primary objective of this trial is to assess efficacy and safety of vocal cord radiation versus complete larynx radiation in T1 and 0 glottic SCC. The primary endpoint is local control uh, at two years post radiation treatment, and this trial has many secondary endpoints that also uh, focus on the function uh, post vocal cord radiation versus complete laryngeal radiation. Uh, so hopefully we will learn from this trial in the near future, and hopefully this trial will set this, the uh, vocal cord irradiation as a standard of uh, care radiation uh, technique for T1 in zero glottic STC. Now let's move to the technical part of this presentation. We'll start with CT simulation. We simulate our patients in the supine position. Uh, we customize the thermoplastic head and neck mask to take the shape of the head and neck and upper chest region. We give IV contrast. We simulate them uh, with, we scan them with two millimeter slice uh, thickness. Then we transfer the CT images to the planning software to start the planning process. So according to ICRU, you need to define your GTV, CTV, and BTV. You need to contour your organs at risk, and you need to add some planning organ at risk uh, volume. So GTV, uh, by definition, or gross tumor, it's not only what you see in diagnostic imaging. In early stage laryngeal cancer, you only see thickening, uh, regularity, and uh, you see just some small areas of enhancement. So it's very important to rely on a clinical examination, including laryngoscopy. Then you add a clinical target volume margin where you think that there is a microscopic uh, disease. Then you add your setup uh, margin. 
So if you're going to treat early stage glottic cancer, uh, you need just to contour uh, organs at risk located 2 cm above and below your target. You need to contour the spinal cord. You need to add 5 mm uh, BRV margin. You need to contour right and left carotid, right and left submandibular glands, esophagus and thyroid gland, and non-involved vocal uh, cord. Uh, when you do uh, epsi cord radiation. When you have uh, T1, T2 supraglottis or uh, subglottis, then you need to expand your organs at risk to include more organs that you want to spare from radiation treatment. How I do carotid sparing IMRT in my practice for T1 glottic SCC? I follow the international consensus guidelines, delineation of the primary clinical target volume in laryngeal cancer. I start contouring with the GTV definition, as you can see in the fiber optic. The tumor is involving the anterior one-third of the left vocal cord extending to anterior commissure and involving the anterior uh, part of the right uh, vocal cord. Then you go to your CT simulation image, you contour gross tumor volume. As you can see in this uh, CT cut, you gather all information from fiber optics, CT image, and diagnostic imaging. Once you're happy with the GTV contouring, you verify your GTV in all uh, uh, CT simulation views, transverse, sagittal, and coronal. You make sure that you're not missing any part of the tumor. Then you need to define your clinical target volume. In early stage uh, T1 neglotic cancer, it's optional to define only one or two clinical target volumes. If you decide to define only one clinical target volume, then it's your high risk uh, clinical target volume. And according to this uh, nomenclature, it's uh, CTVB1 representing in a blue uh, line. As you can see, the blue line created uh, by expansion of the GTV in red by five millimeter margin. Then uh, you can see that uh, the blue line is overlapping with low risk areas for microscopic disease and high risk areas for microscopic disease. So then you need to get your final uh, CTVB1 uh, representing a yellow line by uh, editing your initial CTVB1 uh, by exclusion of the low risk areas of microscopic disease. So you edit for the strap muscles, you edit for the thyroid cartilage, and then you leave the areas at high risk for microscopic disease in the uh, vocal cords. Then you add your setup uh, margin. Another example of carotid sparing IMRT for T2 glottic SCC, you start with the GTV definition, you contour your uh, GTV based on the fiber optic findings. As you can see, the tumor arising from the right uh, vocal cord extending to anterior commissure and involving the supraglottic larynx. You contour your GTV based on all information, then you need to define your clinical target volume. You have two volumes, CTV that will receive 56 or CTV B2 and CTV that will receive uh, 70 degree or CTV uh, B1. So you start with the CTV B2 that will receive 56 degree representing in the blue line, which generated by expanding the GTV by 10 millimeter margin. Then you need to, to edit this CTV by excluding uh, the uh, strap muscles and uh, the air you keep, the thyroid cartilage in T2 for a reason that the next st stage is uh, T3 and in T3 the, by definition the tumor is invading the inner cortex of the thyroid cartilage. So thyroid cartilage is at risk for a microscopic disease. So then you need to define your CTVB1 that will receive 70 gray representing in yellow. How you get a yellow contour, you expand your GTV by five millimeter margin the, by uh, excluding CTVB2 or CTV56 uh, gray. Then you add your uh, setup margin. And uh, during CT simulation and the treatment delivery, it's uh, very important to instruct your patients not to swallow. Uh, swallowing uh, motion can be 2CM in the superior direction. It's rare, rapid, and easily suppressed by patient. 
and it's uh, associated with negligible impact on radiotherapy dose uh, delivery. Another motion is uh, respiratory motion reaching up to 6 mm in sub -lymph direction and 2 mm in the anterior posterior direction. So you need to think about adding uh, ITV uh, but this is still not a standard and uh, something that we need to think about and develop in the near future. Uh, during uh, treatment, you need uh, to do daily CBCT and image matching uh, with laryngeal match rather than bone match. We know that there is a substantial uh, positional disconcordance between cervical vertebrae and larynx could be occur between radiotherapy fractions. Uh, data from Princess Margaret Hospital uh, confirmed that uh, soft tissue mass is associated with superior local control compared with uh, bony match. Now let's move to supraglottic larynx. The treatment options is either radiation to primary with elective bilateral nickel radiation as supraglottic is associated with high incidence of nodal spread. The recommended technique is IMRT and fractionation is altered fractionation schedule. The other option is endoscopic or partial oval laryngectomy plus neck dissection. SEER database uh, showed that uh, surgery improved five-year disease-specific survival compared to radiation uh, therapy. Uh, in some situation, when you get positive margin after uh, endoscopic or open uh, laryngectomy, you need to consider uh, radiation therapy for a closed margin presence of BNI and LVI and chemoradiation for a positive uh, margin. Uh, this is an example of target volume uh, delineation for T1 supraglottic larynx. You need to define two volumes, one for a primary, one for elective neck. You start with the primary, you contour the GTV. As you can see in the FOL, the tumor is, is involving the right uh, false cord, you contour your, your GTV, then you create your uh, CTV B2 low risk that will receive 56 degree representing in a blue. Uh, this created by expanding the GTV by 10 millimeter before editing. Then you need to create your final CTV B2 or 56 representing in a, gre in a green after editing for air cavity, thyroid uh, cartilage and strap muscles. Then you need to create your CTVB1 that will receive 70 gray and 35 fractions using the Hanka schedule. This created by expanding your GTV primary by 5 mm excluding your CTVB2 uh, or CTV56. Uh, then you add your setup uh, margin. And according to international uh, recommendation for T1N0 M0 subroglotis larynx, it's recommended to include level 2, 3, and uh, 4A at the both sides of the neck. I start contouring of level 2 at the level of the transversal process of C1. Medially, I stop at the medial border of uh, um, internal carotid artery. I contour the fibro fatty tissue located between the inner edge of the posterior pillar of diagnostic, sternal clodomastoid muscle and paraspinal muscles. Posteriorly, I stop at the posterior border of the sternal clodomastoid and anteriorly, I stop at the posterior border of the submandibular gland. This level uh, ends at the level of the uh, at the bottom level of the hyoid bone then i start contouring of uh, level 3 the anterior border of level 3 is the anterior edge of the sternocloid uh, mastoid uh, muscle the posterior border is the posterior edge of the sternocloid mastoid uh, muscle and the medial border is the middle part of the carotid so you contour the fibro fatty tissue located between these anatomical structures cut by cut until you reach the thyroid cartilage you stop there then you start contouring of level 4a the boundaries of 4a is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle posterior edge is the posterior order of the sternocleidomastoid muscles and the medial border is the uh, medial edge of the uh, carotid artery you contour the fibro fatish space between these anatomical structures cut by cut uh, until inferiorly uh, 2 cm above the maniaburum uh, sternae. Uh, treatment options for subglottic CA is either radiation therapy to primary with elective bilateral neck to level 2, 3, 4, and 6A. Uh, we use IMRT with altered diffractionation. The other option is to go for total laryngectomy 
or extended partial laryngectomy with uh, with neck dissection. Uh, adjuvant radiation therapy usually post surgery is considered for a closed margin in presence of BNI and LVI, and adjuvant chemo radiation is for a uh, positive margin. During radiation therapy, we see uh, early stage laryngeal cancer patients weekly to manage acute side effects post radiation. We see them initially two weeks post radiation therapy, then Q three months for or more frequent for two years, then Q four months or more frequent for a third year, then Q six months or more frequent for years four to six, then annually for years six to ten. We uh, follow up them with fiber optic and we order imaging as clinically indicated. Uh, in summary, radiotherapy is valid option for early stage glottic cancer, especially with anterior commissure involvement. Carotid sparing, uh, complete larynx IMRT with daily image matching yields, excellent local control rates. Vocal cord only radiation is promising but needs further study. A randomized trial is underway. IMRT with altered diffractionation is valid option for supra and subglottic uh, larynx cancer. Uh, thank you for your attention and hopefully we will meet in the near future face to face. So there is uh, no question in the chat. Uh, Maltasim, can you raise, uh, can you type your questions because you cannot speak? Okay, so there is a question. Would you irradiate the neck electively uh, if the glottic tumor extends minimally to supra or infraglottis? So uh, in some uh, T2 tumors uh, with the sluggish cord, uh, transglottic, in some situation, I do agree that we irradiate uh, bilateral uh, level two and the three in, in, in this situation. So it's in bulky and the transglottic tumors. Uh, these tumors behave actually like uh, T3 tumors rather than T2, T2 tumor. So I do irradiate electively uh, in, in this situation. So another question uh, by uh, Dr. Basim Youssef, what's your preferred fractionation type and dose for uh, T tumors? For T tumors, I use actually the Hanka. Uh, the Hanka uh, used the range dose between 62 to 68 degree. However, in uh, real time practice, all radiation oncologists now using 70 degree. So 56 uh, with uh, one centimeter expansion to epsi cord, uh, then uh, uh, 70 degree with five millimeter expansion to 70 degree uh, SAB and 35 refractions. In some aggressive, aggressive tumors, I do also uh, consider uh, 95 to 12 protocol with the hyperfractionation. Uh, I use BID treatment. So another question. Uh, Regarding early glutic, are you doing now epsilateral uh, cord irradiation as a standard or just carotid sparing? So since 2014 at KHCC, I do uh, carotid sparing uh, IMRT to epsi cord. So it's uh, I did not observe uh, more recurrences um, than we historically uh, saw. 
Another uh, question, uh, you have mentioned that in your institution, you doesn't use the new adjuvant chemo for uh, preservation in case that the patient uh, locally advanced and uh, recare. Uh, would you use the Gortic regimen to test the biology of the tumor? In case of yes, would you use uh, the intermediate volume or you give uh, the max dose to the initial uh, volume before chemo? In my institution, uh, we don't use the new adjuvant uh, chemo for organ preservation. In some rare situations, if the patient uh, received the new adjuvant outside of our institution, we do yeah, uh, obtain uh, initial staging imaging and we contour according to initial uh, target volume for locally advanced disease. Uh, another question, can some cases of T3 glottic tumors be treated as T1 or T2? The answer uh, is no, if the patient fit for radical uh, radiation, the primary with bilateral elective neck. However, in some elderly patients uh, with significant comorbidities, you might uh, consider a local radiation therapy or de-intensify your target volumes for uh, special situations. But for patients who are fit, not I would I would irradiate bilateral neck. Another question by Dr. Basim Youssef for carotid sparing. Dosimetric studies are definitely positive for IMRT. Any clinical data, especially for early stage disease? Yes. Data from memorial Sloan Kettering uh, confirmed that uh, epsilateral uh, cordial radiation is equal to whole larynx uh, radiation with IMRT. Furthermore, there is a recent uh, meta-analysis published comparing conventionally fractionated radiation therapy with carotid sparing uh, showed similar uh, local control.